Welcome to this PNPJS version 2 video on a new feature called Library Extensions. Let's begin by briefly reviewing the agenda for this video. We'll begin by taking a look at Library Extension use cases. After that, we'll take a look at the updated documentation. There's a couple ways to find the docs for Library Extensions, so I'll show you both of them so you can use what works best for you. And then finally, we'll discuss an overview of the library extension choices and registration options that are available to us. And after that overview, we'll dive into a demo of how to utilize named extensions combined with a factory registration. Let's begin by first taking a look at why we might want to use extensions within PNPJS. While there are likely many, many use cases for extensions, a few we're going to cover here. The first is that I might want a method or a property that doesn't exist yet in the library. One example of this is perhaps we're working on a new feature contribution for PNPJS. We can use extensions to provide that functionality until our contribution is complete. Or we might need functionality that is unique to our organization or solution that is unlikely to become default to the library. Extensions allow us to write the code for that functionality once and then use it throughout our solution. Lastly, we may find that there's a bug in the library that we can create a local workaround for until the official fix is available. Now that we've covered a few reasons why we might want to take advantage of PNPJS extensions, the next question is how can I take advantage of this new feature? The first and best place to look when wanting to learn new features about PNPJS is at the updated documentation. You can always access the most up-to-date documentation by visiting aka.ms forward slash PNPJS. So let's jump over to a browser and I'll show you where you can find the documentation for library extensions. We'll begin with a blank browser and go ahead and navigate to the aka.ms forward slash PNPJS. Once you're on the PNPJS documentation landing page, you can find library extensions by selecting Packages, OData, and Extending an OData Library. You can also utilize the search functionality from anywhere within the documentation. You simply click into the search box and start typing extensions, and you can see it's found all the extension documentation. Within the table of contents here on the right is where you can find the different types of extensions that are available, as well as the registration options. If you click through each of the sections in the table of contents, you'll find a description as well as a sample for each of the type of extensions. You'll also find a description and a sample for each of the registration options as well. Because this is an introductory video for PNPJS extensions, we won't be diving deep into the details of each extension and registration option. But let's take a look at a slide that provides some clarity on how the three types of extensions can be connected to the three types of registration options. Let's begin with the three types of extensions that are available to us, function, named, and proxy handler. All three of these extension choices empower us as developers to extend the functionality of PNPJS that might not exist out of the box. As mentioned in the use case section of our video, we may have a very specific scenario to our organization that needs to be part of every solution. For example, maybe when we make a request for lists, we always need them to be ordered in a specific way. Within the PNPJS extensions is where we can include reusable code that would make it easy to ensure that sort order requirement is always met. Creating custom functionality using one of these three types of extensions, though, is only half the story. We need to establish the typings of our extension as well so that they're available within our solution. The three different registration options available for us are global, factory, and instance. And they each provide a different level of scope to where our custom extensions are available when using PNPJS, including other benefits such as making our custom extensions available within IntelliSense. Now it's important to note that all of our extension choices can be used with any of the registration options. There is no unique scenario where only one extension choice will work with only one registration option. But the point here is that there is no limitations imposed on us when choosing which extension type and which extension registration option combination that works best for our solution. So now that we've covered some use cases, as well as what extension types and registration options are available to us, let's look at a demo. In this demo, we're going to show how to use a named extension with a factory registration. This is a combination scenario we feel that might be the most common. For this demo, we'll be using an out-of-the-box web part, which I've already created and you can see here. I've also already installed the latest version of PNPJS version 2.0. While this demo solution only includes a single web part, it's possible that our solution could also grow in the future to include more web parts or SharePoint framework extensions. 
And we can plan for that possible scenario by using a PNPJS preset to store our new named extension functionality. Now, if you're not yet familiar with PNPJS presets, you can learn more about them in the PNPJS video on selective imports, or you can check out the PNPJS documentation. Because we want our new PNPJS named extension preset to be available to all future web parts or SharePoint framework extensions added to this solution, we'll place the preset file here at the source folder level. We'll call it PNPJS hyphen named extension dot TS. The first thing we'll do is paste in some import statements that are necessary for our named extension. And we'll briefly review what each of them is for. The first is the extend factory, which is what allows us to provide that extended functionality for PNPJS. The second is the SP rest object. This allows us to export the SP constant from this preset so that it's available to the rest of our solution. The rest are some ambient features we'll need for this particular example. And since we know that ultimately we'll be needing to export that SP rest object, we'll go ahead and add that in now. Now at this point, we have a fully working preset that would allow us to access list data. So let's jump over into our web part TypeScript file and set up the necessary imports to use this preset file. So we'll go ahead and open our web part, the primary TypeScript file, and begin importing our preset. We'll go ahead and paste in the import statement. And as we have done in our other PNPJS version two sample videos, We'll include a small method that retrieves the collection of lists and updates our web part with the list of those list names. And lastly, we'll go ahead and execute this method within our primary render method right here. Now let's take a look at the actual request that's being made. We're looking for a collection of lists from our current web. But what if the need for this particular solution was not simply to get the collection of lists in default order, but rather only the last 10 lists created? We can accomplish that by adding specific order by and top values. So let's paste in that functionality now. And while this is completely valid and functional, remember that the requirement was that all lists be ordered by created date, descending, and only including the top 10. It's highly possible that someone could mistakenly include a true value on the order by, which would make it ascending, or provide the wrong top value number. So while this is a very simple PNPJS request example, it's also a perfect example of how named extensions in PNPJS version two can be used. So let's jump back over to our preset TypeScript file and let's look at the code that's necessary to set up that specific functionality into a named extension. The first thing we'll do is take advantage of the extend factory, which is something we had imported when we originally set up our preset, but as you can see, we have yet to use. Let's go ahead and paste in some code that allows us to utilize that extend factory. Essentially what we're doing is we're using the extend factory function to create a custom method called lists order created descending. This allows us to identify that exact order by and top value in a single method. So let's save that, jump back over to our web part file and try to utilize our method name. So we'll go ahead and click on our web part. We'll come in and we'll look to replace our lists with the method name, but we see there's an error. Why is that? It tells us it does not exist. And that's because as we reviewed earlier, there are two parts to the PNPJS library extension story. While we created the functionality for our library extension, we haven't established the typings. So let's go ahead and paste in the code necessary for establishing the typings in our extension and making it available to the rest of our solution. Essentially what we're doing is we're extending the iWeb interface to include the name of our new method as seen here. This not only ensures that the types are set up correctly for importing our extension throughout our solution, it also allows for our custom method to be used within IntelliSense. So if we save this and go over to our web part TypeScript file, we see the error is now gone. In fact, if we delete our method altogether and engage IntelliSense, we can see that our method is here available for us to utilize. And again, while this is a very simple example, the use of the PNPJS extension ensures that the correct order by and top values are used in a very reliable and repeatable way. Now let's take a look at another scenario that is slightly changing the requirements we've talked about so far, which has been to return the top 10 lists most recently created, but specifically for the current web. But what if we wanted to use a named extension to be able to identify the current web or the root site collection. Well, then you're going to love this next example because we can create parameterized named extensions. 
Instead of adding our functionality to the extend factory first, as we did in our previous example, let's begin by establishing the typings of our extension by extending the iWeb interface. This will include the name of our custom method, as well as the parameters that are going to be available to it. Now that we've set up the registration for our functionality, let's go ahead and add in the custom method that makes everything work. In this very simple method, we check to see if our string parameter is equal to root. If it is, then we make a connection to the root site collection and return the list's collection. If not, we simply look at the current site collection. So let's go ahead and save and jump over to our web part to see how we can utilize this new functionality which is really no different from how we executed the method in our first example. We engage IntelliSense, which allows us to find our custom function. We see that it is accepting a parameter of string, so we'll set up root, and then we'll go ahead and execute it using the new invocables feature that's part of PNPJS version two. No doubt you can see that having the option to parameterize your library extension functionality provides enormous flexibility. Hopefully these two demo examples have given you a glimpse of the incredible power that can be achieved using library extensions. We also encourage you to try out the other library extension options available, and you can always learn more about them and all of the PNPJS features by referencing the most up-to-date documentation available at aka.ms forward slash PNPJS.